Ratnado. What? This is Solid Snake. No! Hard Snake tells me that you've got a birthday coming up. <laughs> that you're turning 33 no years old. No way! <laughs> 33 years old? Well, <laughs> it seems that age hasn't slowed you down one bit. <laughs> I'm told that you're a Twitch streamer no! and a podcast co-host <laughs> and a big Metal Gear 2 fan. So, that <laughs> tells me that you have exceptional taste in video games and, and video, video game, game characters. characters. <laughs> so I no wanted way. to wish you an extremely happy birthday oh and goodness. a superb year full of love and stealth and happiness. <laughs> Still, I'd like you to try to remember the basics of CQC. No way! <laughs> to do your best to avoid getting into any unnecessary uh, crab battles. Crab battles. And crab battle. In this era of the fox die virus, anytime you need to go outside, please take a cardboard box. <laughs> You'll just feel more comfortable in the box. You should come in the box. Happy birthday, my friend. <laughs> and listen, anytime you're feeling down, just remember this. Uh, Ratnado. Huh. You're pretty good. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Scrollies Podcast. I am Squat Cobbler, and I am joined by my co-host. Yo, what's up? It's me. It's Team Ratnado, and you can be part of that team. But right now, it's a lot of people. But hey, uh, twitch.tv slash Team Ratnado. Twitch.tv slash Team Ratnado, the origin of that name coming from A Plague's Tale Innocence, which had its sequel announced not too long ago. So maybe maybe we'll see the continuation of the Ratnado into the Rat Cyclone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It'll get bigger. Yeah, well, it just takes time, you know. You know, you know, you just added more rats, maybe even a few other rodents, and uh, it just it just grows and encompasses all. But we're we're here, we're here at Scrollies, uh, and we're we're gonna be talking today. About something a little uh, melodic, about, about about a bit of rhythm. There's some time signatures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we're gonna have some treble, some bass. Zicato, if we're lucky. Ooh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're talking video game music, and we'll, we'll be getting into that in a moment. Um, maybe maybe getting into some specific people, composers. Before that, right, Nato? What have you been playing offline? Oh, what have I been playing? Um, actually, it's pretty simple. I've been playing a few things. Number one, Three Houses, because I've got about a couple days to finish everything up before Three Hopes, which is going to be the new Musou game, which I guess, uh, as you know, a lot of Fire Emblem people kind of look down upon, but, you know, who cares because it's a great game and it's really fun. <laughs> hey, hey, Zimu, Zimu, I see you shaking your head. I see you turning your nose, but... You know, this is what got Ratnado into real Fire Emblem. So uh, the accessibility, the accessibility is there and it is welcome. Well, I mean, and I've seen a bunch of other stuff to you before that. I mean, like, this is the first game that I'm like, OK, I'm going to get I'm going to get into it now for sure myself. And and you know what? Zimrus is great. I, I, this is his, his role on the Discord is he's a great lord, which means he's basically a main character. And uh, right now I have support level B with him. I don't think I'm going to be able to get support level S. I don't think that's an option, but... If we can get to support level A, I'll be really happy. Well, hey, we we suppress Zimrus. <laughs> we suppress Zimrus, as, as, as the saying goes, as as his camp his uh, presidential campaign will go as well. What about we Empress with Zimrus? We Empress, Empress, like like an Empress, like you know. Hey, I, I know, but an Empress, he's Emperor, Empress. I, I, you know, I'm taking liberties. We Empress Zimrus, maybe. What about we're we're impressed, Zimres. Uh, we're impressed, Zimres. I could hear, I could hear a Smash uh, stage chanting that. <laughs> well, there you go. You know, you know, you say, you say it's uh, Fire Emblem Warriors that got you into the series. But when and if I ever start playing those games, we'll, we'll obviously be thanking Super Smash Brothers Brawl for that uh, because I, I was introduced to Ike then, my main at the time. Yeah, and uh, he came from, he came from Fire Emblem. Radiant Dawn. Radiant Dawn. Yeah. And then another Radiant. Uh, I saw a uh, shout out Saint Isaiah. Saint Isaiah. He was playing um, some of the ice game. And he said he said the second one's better because he's less of a little kid. Also, I've been playing Valkyria Chronicles. It's really great. It's kind of like Fire Emblem. It's a tactical RPG and it's great. I, I just didn't want to forget because that's something I stayed up like very late, like four or five days ago, up to like 3 a.m. playing because I was just having so much fun with it. 
I suppose it deserves an honorable mention on the Squirrelly's intro segment then. Anyways, yeah, well, that's what I've been playing. What about yourself, Mr. Squat Cobbler? Myself, I have been playing uh, very little, you know, here and there, but I have uh, delved a little bit, a little bit, not much beyond the, the first chapter, but Lego Jurassic World uh, it was on sale due to a recent uh, movie release. Uh, I guess they, they timed that. <laughs> so I, I was playing a little bit of uh, the first one, Jurassic Park, in the Lego series. It's uh, it's the first Lego game I've played, uh, brand new to me in a while. Um, I think the last, I said, yeah, I said during our movie tie-in episode, the last one I played was Lego Marvel, which wasn't really based on any specific property. It was uh, very heavily inspired by the MCU, but they didn't, because they did end up doing a Lego Avengers, which was very much based on the MCU, but I didn't play that one. Yeah, the Marvel stuff was something I was a little bit more familiar with. I mean, I know the MCU, but also, as I know Marvel characters, it was a little bit more in line with that. More based on the comics, for sure. Yeah. That said, the Lego Jurassic World came out after that, and I feel like it harkens back to the older ones a bit more. It's uh, a lot more linear. It doesn't really have an open hub world like um, Lego DC superheroes and uh, Lego Marvel did. Right. You know, maybe maybe I'll start uh, breezing through them again, making my way up to Lego Skywalker Saga. I've been I've had hankering for a Lego game, actually, but I think I would disappoint Plaid if I got the Skywalker Saga. Oh, well, well, you can just play the, the Lucas inspired ones. Well, that's the thing is I do have on PlayStation 3 Lego the Complete Saga. Oh, well, it's not complete anymore. L- little did we know it wasn't complete yet. Complete at the time. Now it's uh, the, the non mousified saga. <laughs> Sorry, cat. Pure saga. The- <laughs> Moving on. Number one. <laughs> Number one. Yeah, this was going to be a top five, but Ratnado said, no, no, we can stretch this content out <laughs> to five separate episodes, let alone a top five list. So we're doing our top one composers for video games today. You'll never guess which series they, they are heavily uh, involved in. <laughs> <laughs> for each of us but uh i guess uh, should we just state who our composers are up front and then then get into it i think so but i do want to say though that the reason i didn't want to do five is i think it'd be fun if we made more of them down the road of just like hey here's another composer i really like here's their songs that i like uh, that's the reason why yeah instead of instead of a top five episode you get five top episodes hey <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess we're going in backwards order, so so we'll we'll like these composers less and less as we go. But oh, uh, you know, we'll just say say top five in no particular order, even though these these first two are very much the number ones for both of us. Pe- peaking at the top is that not our style? That that is indeed the Squirrelies uh, mantra. <laughs> what is yours, Mister Squat Cobbler? Your your favorite composer, your composer you want to shout out today and talk about? You know, I would say my my number one composer is a genius, but I think. Maybe it's more applicable to say that he's a wise man. Oh. David Wise, everyone. The master behind the DKC soundtracks and many of Rare's greatest hits. Yeah. Currently is a freelancer not working for Rare because uh, Rare is not the company it once was. <laughs> oh, boy. Unfortunately. and But that I think that's kind of why, if I had to make, make a guess, the great ape, the whole reason he sent you back in time and, and he's working with you, it's to correct that. Maybe maybe one day we'll all wake up in a world where the DK revolution is no longer a revolution. It's just the DK status quo. Oh, what, what a world that would be, you know, for, for it to not even be a special thing, to just have it be normal and boring. People in that world wake up and have new Donkey Kong content with a cup of coffee. Don't, don't. Oh, I'm crying. <laughs> I'm crying just thinking of it. Tears of joy. <laughs> yes, David Wise is my number one composer uh, for, for I think obvious enough reasons but I'll, I'll get into it I'll get into a little bit of why that is but before we do that Ratnado yeah no surprise here as well Nobu Ematsu huge huge catalog of music most of the like the Final Fantasies that I love he worked on those uh, and so yeah I mean he's got a very specific style and I think uh, we'll get into that too as well but yeah, that's number one. I kind of fought with a couple others because when it comes down to it, what I love is variety in music. I, I listen to a lot of video game music for Dungeons and Dragons inspiration, but I always come back to Nobuo Ematsu. It's so good. 
Well, as they say, variety is the spice of life. Uh, I, I, I'd say the same about David Wise. He, he provides a lot of variety, and we'll get into that as well. But uh, before that, I, I'd just like to say the thing that makes video game music unique, in my opinion, is that it has to sound good on loop. Because for the most part, especially if it's like an overworld theme or a level theme, you're going to be hearing it a lot. And uh, if it gets annoying, then it's not good video game music. And if it's very cool, then I guess it's serviceable video game music, but we're not. You know, we don't we don't care about that. We want the good stuff, not the good music. Yeah, that is so true. And that's why I use a lot of this stuff for like gym music. I know that's going to be probably the nerdiest thing you hear. Um, I don't I haven't been to the gym as much lately trying to get back. But when I was like in my prime, uh, you know, other people are sitting there listening to like they're like big metalcore heads or they're listening to all this like super aggressive rap or whatever. And I'm over there listening to the dulcet tones of Final Fantasy 15 of persona of final fantasy so i you know I, I, kind of weird but you're like you're saying because it loops because it doesn't break it up so much it's perfect for just about any kind of activity that you're doing yet your your 15 your 30 your hour long extended cuts of your favorite video game track and you realize the time is just slipping away as you're listening to it oh i'm already 20 minutes in 45 minutes in this is all the same song man what a bop. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever done that thing where you have a soundtrack? I mean, movies is usually more, but you listen to like a soundtrack or something, maybe for a video game, and you just like try and sync it up with what you're doing. Oh, all the time. And it's it's terribly dangerous because, you know, when I'm trying to hold my breath for the entire length of aquatic ambience, I, I end up uh, passing out and floating <laughs> in the water. Yeah, you really need to stop trying to jump into floating barrels in the air. It's kind of dangerous. You know, I, I, I keep hoping they'll just burst apart and then and then a squat cobbler partner will just pop out. But instead, I just hit my head on these floating barrels and it hurts my <laughs> noggin. Oh, so Donkey Kong music. I, I, I know it. I love it. I've listened to it. I enjoy it. But squat cobbler, you know a bit more than me about it. What is it about David Wise? What does he do? What makes him special? What makes him important? Well, you know, I'd say it's, first of all, what David Wise doesn't do that makes him stand apart. For you see, David Wise, self, self-admittedly, self was not formally trained in musical theory and in, in writing music. Uh, he was originally a, uh, I think, either an engineer or a salesperson for synth machines uh, in the 80s, um, uh, synthesizers. And... The Stampers, uh, the founders of Rare, they they came into his shop and he was just explaining to them how a piece of, of tech worked. And they were like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, we work in video games. Uh, you want a job? <laughs> Apparently whatever he was telling them was, was still our liking. So they hired him on. He, uh, he did a few games uh, for them back on the NES. A popular one that he did on the NES was Battletoads, which uh, has a pretty sick beat for its pause menu. Oh yeah, absolutely sick. <laughs> oh, we're driven to this, man. Man, imagine, imagine hitting hmm. pause and trying to make a phone call. I could not. I can't. I wouldn't want to imagine that. <laughs> I'm totally uh, ripping off AVGM with that joke. But yeah, David Wise, uh, he he was working within the limitations of the NES, and uh, I'd say what sets him apart, especially early on in his career, was that he really didn't have great tools to work with. In fact, he was provided the same songwriting toolkit as every other composer for every other Super Nintendo NES game. Right. What he did differently was how he sampled, how he utilized it, and especially with the DKC games, he, he just spent so much time uh, down mixing and really just trying to get the most out of the very limited tech at the time. Um, the Super Nintendo uh, allegedly only had several channels of audio to work with and that that went for everything music sound effects um all of it was all contained within those tracks yeah and david wise had to work with that and and create some masterpieces i'll say it aquatic ambience stick rush symphony all of them were done within the limitations and pushing what the tech could do mm -hmm. um now the super nintendo specifically had a very advanced sound chip for the time you never really had anything quite like that before on the nes or even uh, currently along with it on the Sega Genesis, uh, because 
all that extra power was was allocated to blast processing naturally <laughs> naturally naturally but david wise worked within these means and uh produced some of the the greatest songs on the system and and quite possibly of video games at large well you know uh, it's he's pretty good he's really good let's say he's really good but... all right all right well, we're <laughs> not looking for a debate here but I'm, I'm... I'm just kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> no i would i remember even as a kid being so impressed and i know like he didn't do like uh on let's say dkc1 he worked on that right Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he, he wasn't the sole composer. So so a lot of people give him sole credit. And I think, you know, credit where it's due. Evelyn uh, Fisher was another composer on that. And she wrote a lot of other really popular tracks, uh, Ice Cube Chant, among others. But David Wise was definitely, I think, the lead music person on that team. DKC2, from what I understand, was all him. And then DKC3 was all Evelyn. Which has quite a few more bops, in my opinion. DKC2 does. But my question on that, Fear Factory, that's like the one that always comes to my mind. And I remember like listening to it on the Super Nintendo and being like, why does this sound like it's not a Super Nintendo game? Why does this sound like it's an actual, like it could be on a record or on a on a cassette player? And like being super impressed with this. So I like even to young five or six year old rat, that was something that stuck stuck out. I think that one specifically you could put on at a party today and you'd get people just jamming out and dancing to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> going for it. Oh, man. All that music was so good, though. Yeah, and and he didn't even think... He thought he was just going to write some temp music. Uh, he didn't think that his stuff would end up being used because Nintendo had Koji Kondo, another great composer who I'm sure we'll talk about in the future. Um, yeah. And, and he, he composed pretty much all of their big soundtracks at the time. Zelda, Mario, uh, Yoshi... Um, but David Wise's stuff, uh, his his jungle theme, has basically become the Donkey Kong theme. <laughs> mm-hmm. So good. He he wrote three different pieces for that just to get three different styles, and he ended up just stringing them all together, and that's what you ended up getting. And that's probably the most remixed piece of Donkey Kong music even to this day. Um, people think of it as being the main theme, even though it isn't. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I'm going to ask. I'm, I think I already know the answer because this is on this is on DKC1 and, and I hope Gangplank Galleon. Do we have David Wise to thank for that? Do you know? David Wise is responsible for Gangplank Galleon. He he was fusing because he, he drew from a few different inspirations. In the case of Gangplank Galleon, he mixed an upbeat shanty with some heavy metal, uh, essentially. <laughs> Some 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 hard rock. I mean, like, who would even think these two would go well together? And yet they do. Uh, yeah. I remember when I was playing the DKC games with Atsumori, and uh, for the most part, you know, very very positively receiving the music, uh, having never heard it for the first time. We get to the end boss, and she said, "Oh, okay, this track, uh, this track is all right, I guess." <laughs> you know, just <laughs> shrugging it off at the beginning, but then the then the drums, then the the guitar comes in, and she's like, "Oh, okay, I can get behind this now." And like, oh, wait until you hear the Smash Bros. version. That, that goes that goes too hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, that even lines up with the buff. Spoilers for DKC1 if you haven't played it yet. I don't I can't imagine you haven't. That kind of lines up with the boss too, though, right? Yeah, it, it's it, it's this pompous, uh, large, you could even say uh, <laughs> gluttonous reptile, uh, King K. Rule, who pretty spry. He jumps around. He he runs at you. I mean, you know, you don't really know what to expect from him. And you think you take him down the first part, but then, then, then he trolls Cleveland, and, and uh, the <laughs> end question mark. Nope. <laughs> and then the guitar part kicks off. Like literally, I remember after that at work, um, you know, we, we were working for sure. If anyone from work listens to this, yeah, of course we were working. <laughs> but there was this- absolutely watch his Twitch on the clock. <laughs> Every no doubt. No, I, I'm very careful about that. I always, anyways. <laughs> but I remember it was that 2018 announcement. Uh, we're all on our phones watching the Nintendo Direct or whatever it was, mm-hmm. Nintendo Treehouse. Sakurai signing off, and the screen starts shaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're and like, well, so the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and the fake out with uh, DDD as well. Ah, uh, yes, that's one of the best Smash reveals, uh, just oh, for that man. reason. And I remember we all got so hyped up and then we were like all listening to Gangplank Galleon, like actually just we're all like, oh, are you? Yeah, of course I'm listening to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. K. Rule. <laughs> I, I think th- this specific video has been taken down uh, 
uh, at the time of this recording, but at a time where one channel had all the Smash um, soundtracks uploaded, I think it was uh, one of the more popular channels that had the entire soundtrack on YouTube. Yeah. Um, Game Point Galleon was the most listened to by far. I think oh, it was like man. above 10 million listens, and the second most was Megalovania, naturally. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> it really goes to show that you can do these songs in all different kinds of styles, and even so, I mean, within the games, variety. You're you're gonna find all different kinds of tracks, all different kinds of musical styles represented here. And I think all a lot of that credit goes to David Wise and his uh, inspirations at the time, um, hugely inspired by Phil Collins in the air tonight. You can hear that in Bayou Boogie. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of a lot of other British bands um, for sure represented in his work. And even so, a lot of just ambient, atmospheric music. Uh, Life in the Caves, Aquatic Ambience, naturally, and Stickerverse Symphony. In oh, the so good. Did you know it was almost scrapped? It was oh. almost scrapped in the game because it was originally written as a water level theme. And if you played DKC2, you know it's the only water levels in there are the ones under the ships. Yeah. I, I imagine there was at one point in d- the development a second type of water level that Superbrush was going to be applied to, but those ended up getting scrapped. So they were going to scrap the song. However, they needed one for their bramble stages in the sky. Yeah. And sure enough, it fit and probably one of the most popular video game pieces of all time. Yeah, definitely. It's so good. I, I remember listening to that, like even just like at the beginning of COVID just for how like, transcendent and just like calming it was and I like you know I was anxious at the start because I also had other stuff going on but that I, I legitimately I remember going out into my backyard to do some gardening and like I'm listening to Sticker Brush Symphony for like an hour. Did you remember to leave a checkpoint? I remember seeing that video and listening to it but I did not leave a checkpoint and I should have. I guess it wouldn't matter now. Yeah at this point in time you no longer can. For those of you that don't know what we're talking about there was at a time a video on the YouTube. It was all in Japanese text and it was just a picture of uh, thorns in the sky. Um, The background of the Bramble levels in DKC2. But most people who listen to the music didn't know that because it was written in Japanese text and uh, there was just a lot of English comments on it. So somehow or another it ended up in the YouTube algorithm and people would show up on this video and even though it was from a video game a Donkey Kong soundtrack. They just were vibing to it, you know? They 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 like to listen to it. It was I think it was like an extended 15 minute long version. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how it started, but people started leaving checkpoints which were just little, hey, this is where I'm at in life, you know, uh, I'm acting as if this is a safe point and here's what's going on with me. And the mm-hmm. comments were filled with that. It was wholesome. And you know, I think it's an excellent example of video game music being more because at that point, it's just real music, you know? People are yeah. people stopping by to vibe and listen to it, and, uh, you know, it's improving their day somehow, some way. Yeah. I only listen to Japanese music. <laughs> that, and I quote, was said by uh, Dewey Teen. Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace, Dewey Teen. <laughs> it in a separate part of the house, and I heard that thinking, oh, what? Someone's playing monkey music and it's not me? It called to him. Yeah, you know, I think that that that's one of the more beautiful examples of David Wise's music extending beyond. Uh, now, I, I'd agree with what you said before. I think DKC2 is the pinnacle soundtrack, very much going in the vein of a pirate pirate game. Um, a lot of songs uh, very shanty inspired, like Gangplank Galleon, and I think to much greater effect than the original's soundtrack, even though the original had some great tracks in it. Um, I think as a whole, DKC2 is the pinnacle there. However, however, Ratnado, DKC2 is not his best work. Really? Really? Because, like I said at the start of this, David Wise started out working within limitations. He had the Super Nintendo hardware to play with. He, he was doing everything he could with synthesizers. But there came a time. In the mid-2000s, when he worked with the GBA, a much worse sound chip... And oh, re- no. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, for those that don't know, though, he did do the entirety of the DKC3 soundtrack fresh on the GBA because he was not originally involved in the Super Nintendo version. Now, a lot of people have issues with that soundtrack in relation to that game because it's not, it doesn't really fit tonally. 
But if you just listen to the songs on their own, I mean, he was he was doing quite a bit with uh, even less than he had <laughs> on the Super Nintendo. Um, yeah. But no, no. What I'm talking about is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Ooh. On the Wii U. That is his best work. And, uh, you know, obviously he's he's done other games besides DK, but uh, I haven't played them, so I'm not going to talk about those. <laughs> <laughs> you, his stuff in ukulele is pretty good, I will say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, a modern game on a modern system with uh, 5.1 surround sound audio and uh, all, all the bells and whistles that provides. It, it is David Wise uncaged. He had the full, the full range to do whatever he wanted with that game. And you know what? He did so many different styles, so many different uh, types of music, and all of them are bangers. Every single one of them. There are original tracks in there. There are remixes in there of his older work. And, you know, I will say the one thing the DK games were missing after Rare left. Mm. Uh, well, well, one was a consistent tone and and uh, level design. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Music. The music was lacking. And even when DKC Returns came about, Retro Studios returning to the essence of what made the DK Revolution what it was under Rareware. Yeah. Uh, the music was very lacking. It, it was a lot of remixes from the first one, but something just wasn't there. It, I mean, it was all MIDI, but I mean, the first ones were MIDI, so so that wasn't it. Um, and I think, you know, an excellent example of this is Aquatic Ambience in that game. It just, there's something so, so empty about it. Something, I mean, you know, it, like the melody's there, but it's just not quite, not, not, not quite what it could be. And, you know, I think what it was missing was David Wise, because when he did that track again in tropical freeze it was as if it was how it was always meant to be uh yeah. just fuller there was breathing sounds added so it, it sounded like you were listening to it through a scuba mask right and just little things like that he does with the atmosphere in that game i think uh going underwater you're uh, that's a little bit of a uh, grant kirkhope in- inspiration uh, from banjo kazooie that you change a bit underwater but yeah. have different tracks play. They would fade into each other. They fade out. And I mean, this is nothing new, but I think what he did in that series was such a return to form that I honestly hope they never make another DK game without David Wise, because I can't imagine going back to what we had before Tropical Freeze after the impression that it left on me and on many people who's played it and listened to the music from it. I'm, I'm going to knock on wood just because I don't know the implications of what you just did. <laughs> I'm saying, David Wise, you're tied to DK going forward as far as I see it. Uh, please come back and do another one. <laughs> <laughs> or when we make our spiritual successor game, we'll get him and it'll be Monkey. It'll be it'll be Monkey and it'll be it'll be Wise Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, I don't know if in that new thing, if he got Disco Train, but uh, as far as I know, he didn't, which is a huge bummer. Disco Train is still waiting for its grand return, Ratnado. Someday, someday soon, you will get to bop along to Disco Train Returns. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to stick with Jam and Sam Miller for now. Hey, Jam and Sam Miller, shout out. He's no David Wise, but he, he can definitely recreate what David Wise uh, was probably listening to before he crushed his samples down to fit in the Super Nintendo. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a little, that's a little bit about my number one composer. Hopefully, you can all have a bit of an understanding now why why I see him as the greatest. But he is not the only one who is worthy of that title on the Scrollies podcast. Rat NATO, please tell us a little bit about uh, your own composer. Nobuo Matsu's great. You should go listen to him. All right, and we're almost there on time. We're about to hit our time mark. <laughs> all right, everyone. We'll see you next week. Uh, Looking forward to having you back. <laughs> I made a mistake indulging uh, squat too much on DK. <laughs> we just talked for 20 minutes. <laughs> I, I was crossing my fingers. Let me go first. Let me go first. Yes, you let me go first. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I, I think we're for a bit of an extended episode, everyone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But uh, it turns out Ratnado was right. It's a good thing this was on the top five list. That, that's what I'm saying is we would have had to like fly through this. We wouldn't have had any time for anything. Um... But yeah, no, my thoughts are pretty... I mean, I, I, I don't have as much to say, and I think a lot of the stuff that I would say, um, your average, like, even your your casual Final Fantasy enjoyer knows a lot of this stuff. The, the number one thing you did say is that David Wise had no formal training. I think, to some degree, um, there's there's debate about this exactly, but Nobu Omatsu is also very famous for not being, like, a formal musician. 
Oh, I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah. I, honestly, from hearing the tracks that I know, which are, I mean, the basic like ones that everyone knows, I would think he'd have some kind of classical music uh, experience. Yeah. And and, the, and like you said, I mean, back in the day when they're making all those NES games or whatever systems they had, the 8-bit games, a lot of those times they just had to make their own music as well as program. I mean, Hideo Kojima, I, I think, I, I think he might have had somebody else, but I know back in the day, like, it was kind of just like, you're doing everything on this game. So when they got together for like Final Fantasy and stuff, I think he kind of just like started to jump into that. And a lot of what was great about like, what's great about Nobuo Matsu is that, you know, he is open to a lot of different styles. Um, when, I, when I say he's untrained, that doesn't mean he, I just think he's not formally sat down in a class and learned music because he's also a musician. He plays in a band and uh, check him out. The Black Mages are also really good. I've always wanted to see a concert, but by the time I actually have the ability to do it, they'd stop touring and all that stuff. You know, he's getting on in his years. And, uh, but he's, he's, man, what a, what a legacy of work that stretched from like the 80s up into the 2000s just on Final Fantasy. Other people have kind of taken over from there on. But a lot of what's great about that as well is that was the, that was the one thing that I heard and I was like, ooh, my, my person too. He's also just not like technically like that. And if you listen to a lot of his stuff, people come and they'll say, you know, like, oh, I mean, he is a musician, but, you know, uh, he has so many influences that comes into his stuff. A lot of prog rock. You can tell that there's a lot of stuff like that that heavily inspires him metal that really goes into Final Fantasy well. And as a person who doesn't really, I, I wouldn't consider myself a metal listener. But I kind of guess I do identify with it whenever I've listened to like symphonic metal stuff, video game stuff. I'm like, yeah, I like this. This is fine. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't really identify so much with the, with being like, oh, I, I like metal or I, I, prog rock's fine. But the pinnacle of his work, much like you're saying with like the limited space he had, there's a really good quote that I love by Jeremy Johns, who is a movie reviewer. He did a few game reviews and one of them Final Fantasy VI, which Squat Cobbler, I'm still waiting for the end of that to be streamed. I, I'm working to get it back here in Yeehaw Times. It's been a process, but I, th I think it's coming along. <laughs> <laughs> a promise is a promise after all. A promise is a promise. No, I understand. Hey, when you're lost in time, what can you do? So Jeremy Johns, he's a movie reviewer, and he's talking about this song uh, that plays at the end. It's called Dancing Mad, and it's the 17 minute long, longer when you play it just like this mashup it, it has like baroque classical inspiration it has prog rock has metal has all these kind of crazy different things and people are like when they listen to it you hear on youtube there's all these reviewers that listen to like those soundtracks and stuff and they're just like blown away anyways the quote that jeremy john says he says this song is like so beautiful it's so amazing and it's on an snes cartridge right and he's like, this is the equivalent of Leonardo da Vinci painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling with crayons. And I would agree. I, I, I know what you mean. It's it's incredible what they're able to turn out with the tools they have, but they are very archaic tools yeah. especially by today's standards. Yeah, it's just like what a handicap and still bringing out something beautiful. Uh, Squawk Cobbler and I create I don't have we mentioned the playlist that we've made? Uh, no, uh, folks, over on our Spotify, we're going to link in the description, is a playlist. Uh, it's going to have 25 of Ratnado and my top picks. Uh, just a selection, you know, nothing nothing necessarily in order. Uh, video game music. Um, so you can check that out below. I'm going to be trying to curate mine into an experience from start to finish. <laughs> I'll call mine a journey. Yeah, exactly. Uh... A conquest, if you will. Ooh, hey. <laughs> Got the pun. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about Nobu Nobuo Oematsu that hasn't already been said. Just such a diverse sense of style. Every game kind of has like its own direction, its own feeling. I mean, for example, Final Fantasy IV has like a very Celtic feeling. Uh, Final Fantasy V, uh, you know, that's a little bit more kind of like generic fantasy. There, there's, there's other people who know Final Fantasy V better than me. Six goes with very much like an Italian operatic feel. Seven has like this kind of a cyberpunky synthetic sound. Eight follows kind of, I don't know, kind of like a romantic 
vibe and so on and so forth you know all these different vibes and it's just like he picks a theme he he, he gets this theme and then he uses inspiration by all these things absolutely uh which which would you say is his best work in your opinion oh that that's really difficult I think the playlist that I was doing, I have to admit to myself that there is a lot in Final Fantasy IV that is just so beautifully simplistic, because that's the jump from NES to SNES. And so by, by a few years later, when they put out Final Fantasy VI, it's the composition's a little more full. You can tell they're, he, he's kind of learned how to master the, the, the MIDI, the sound fonts that they have. But in IV, it's still very like simplistic and and uh, not, not quite as fulfilling, but you get people who come and they take his composition and they like bring it to life in real instruments and stuff. Wow. Again, if you could see the complexity that he had in mind, you're like, this is, is beautiful. The best, the best song. I don't know if there's a number one song. It's so hard. But Ratnado, the PlayStation had CD quality music and <laughs> Final Fantasy VII has One Winged Angel, the bestest song ever. You know what? This is going to be weird. One Winged Angel didn't make it on. Oh, man, no! <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that I knew before I met Rat. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I think One Winged Angel is great, but and, and I had to pass over so many things like that where I'm just like, this needs to be on there, but I was like, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can. And so that's one that didn't... It just That was just right off the list. Um, I find, like, Genova as a boss theme just a little bit more interesting than One Winged Angel. And especially if you're going to listen to the versions of it now, go find the Crisis Core version. Go find one of these actually like orchestral done with actual instruments. Whereas seven, you know, as good as it is, I mean, that's still coming from the font that's on the PlayStation. Right, right, right. Uh, do you think that the soundtrack transitioned well from seven into remake? Um, oof. No, I don't. Oh, <laughs> I know they did a lot of changes. I know they did a lot of changes in uh, in tone and in, I guess, length. Of the song. Yeah, and yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm about, you know, I, I've got a few more things to say about Nobuo, but I will say that the reason that it is what I talked about before about like, being thematic. And I think what a lot of people or I, I don't know if you like the I like the Final Fantasy seven remake soundtrack. It's pretty good. But the problem is to me is that. Final Fantasy 7, especially Midgar, which they decided to set their entire game in, is a cyberpunk story. And so you're really missing something when you get rid of like that synthy, you know, 1990s grungy sound and you get rid of that and come in with this like beautiful, clear, orchestrated music. It just loses what the feeling of it was. Sure. Sure. I get that. So... Um, I find myself listening if I'm going to listen to I, I listen to soundtracks all the time it's about all I listen to I'll listen to Final Fantasy 7 original over remake anytime there you go everyone print that on a shirt Ratnado has made his hot take known uh, back to Nobuo <laughs> but yeah that, that's about it Nobuo Omatsu he's amazing I put a lot of stuff on here I, I, I hope you guys do listen to it anyone if you if you like music I tried to put some stuff on there that's just kind of like beautiful from the like gorgeous sounds of like Spira Unplugged, Xanarkan, Suteki Dane, uh, what's another good one? Cosmo Canyon, like all these just like beautiful songs and like stuff that'll get you really pumped up as well. Just like battle music that's also just like really fun to listen to. He does a lot of stuff and it, and it can get to you. We worked really hard on this, folks, and Ratnado more than I because he actually had his done at the time of recording. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell him, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you told on yourself. Um, but yeah, that that's about it. I, I think everything in my mind, a lot of people, I know that like people, when I play D&D with them, they're like, you always have really good music choice. How do you do that? And such, such a big chunk of it is Final Fantasy music. And so when I play something with somebody like, for example, uh, shout out Vivian, Krasati, um, she's like, oh, Oh, and like she knows she like knew what I was trying to go for. Like, ah, but she never like calls me out in the moment, but she'd be like, oh, I see. Or like, you know, whatever. When we play Dungeons and Dragons and uh, she, she'll give you a knowing nod or, or as much of a nod as she can give without mic or cam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she'll put in a, an emoji. Yeah, just like yes. a, a knowing glance. <laughs> 
but uh, yeah that's it i i think there's so much good in there there's so much good that he's done and i hope people check out this playlist if you don't know any nobu oimatsu give it a try and i hope you like something in it i i, I feel like i have emotions and uh, associated with songs i i likewise hope you like something in in my own and uh well folks i think we're we're out of time but you'll be expecting to see many more of these composer ones uh as, as we go down from our most top faves ever to people we think are pretty good. And, you know, yeah. may, may, maybe geniuses in their own right. But uh, we'll get to that some other time. It's been a pleasure, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on the Scrollies podcast. I have been Squat Cobbler. And I have been, I will be, I will continue to be in this future and all other dimensions as far as I know. This multiverse and that multiverse Team Rat NATO at twitch.tv slash Team Rat NATO. Well, or whatever universe you're from, I just hope that the DK Revolution and Rat NATO is there. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll catch you next time. See ya. Bye.